But from a surgeon's point of view, three things. Grasp, release, and delivery. You know, the, everything you're doing is going to be in one of those three groups. So you just described the difficulty with delivery. Let's do the, do the biceps block. It's easy to do. It adds nothing. I mean, it's just, the right. right. The right. Yeah, Correct. it adds about maybe four seconds to what we're doing. Oh, well, that's good. So, so what we'll do is we'll do the biceps block, and then you will tell me whether okay. that makes a difference in function. Yep. Uh, the difference between upper extremity and lower extremity is the upper extremity is very driven by sensory. Okay. Okay. If a person has totally intact uh, motor but loses sensory to the, the extremity, the extremity is pretty much useless. Yep. All right. It doesn't matter what the ranges of yeah. motion are and everything you measure. So, so motor skills. Now, um, so, so what you have to do is try to develop equivalences between the useful side and the less useful side. So if uh, we use the old thing like you have a bag and a person reaches in the bag with their good side and gets out the, you name it, bring me the ball, and they, they feel for the ball. That's, there's the ball. Okay, now do it with the other side. They have to learn when this side feels this way, this side it feels that way. Okay. Make the equivalent. Hi. It's kind of like using a mouse. You know that going this way is not the same as going that way, but in fact, for the computer it is. It's an equivalence, right? Yep. So they have to develop an sensory equivalence between two sides. It has to be practiced. All right. And, and all kinds of things. So, so popsicle sticks versus emery boards, uh, safety pins versus uh, versus paper clips, a warm spoon versus a cool spoon, uh, okay. sandpaper versus uh, regular paper, uh, satin versus burlap, pennies versus nickels versus dimes. All right. Just if you have a drawer full of crap. You've got all you need, yeah. and, and practice, is <laughs> yes, and then you get prizes for getting it right on the other side. Oh, she likes that, don't you? This is a good way to make some money for spending the money, see? Yeah. So, so the idea is you, you're, you're working on sensory, because what we've discovered, uh, which I had discovered it uh, 30 years ago, but uh, you know, it took us a while to figure it out, because we, we, we did the constraint therapy first. We were the first to do that, by the way. Hmm. Um, uh, forcing the other side to be used, but we were saying, oh, it's motor skills are going up. But what in fact was going up was the perceptual skills. Mm. Um, so now we know that if, if you can increase the perceptual skills just directly by the, doing this, without even asking the person to do these things, like, you know, you're not doing anything like put the thing in the holes, nothing right. that's motor wise, they just start doing it. Now, will the um, bicep block on the right improve supination or wrist extension? I mean, she, she doesn't have supination. She can extend her wrist, but that really gets stuck. But uh, her supination is limited. Yeah, everybody knows that because everybody tests for it. But what you don't understand is in the computer age, the only thing you do with a supinated hand is beg for arms. That's what I'm saying, the money, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so um, Mom's got that. the helper yeah. hand really wants to be down. Can we make a hand go up? Yes. But there's the limited utility to worrying about that. Yeah, if I got that. a person with a bilateral uh, pro, uh, pronated arms and they have, they have to live alone, one hand's got to clean the butt, you know, so, so we need a supinated side. But usually it's uh, trying to get supination on a helper hand is a, is a lot of procedure with, with almost no functional uh, payback. Okay. Nothing good comes of it. All right. So I said, you know. Let that go. Yeah, I mean, it's not, you know. Like I said, it's a, hey, look at supination, high five. And they call it a good outcome because they have range of motion. Right. It's a simple thing. Take the pronator, uh, detach it, bring it around the side, detach it to no, the side. No, we don't want to do that. And, they, and they make a supinator out of it. Pronator right. transfer, and I, I can guarantee you, I'm going to have a good result. Good result being the range of motion change that I produced. That doesn't have a goddamn thing that it does that's for your mind. You know, it just does nothing, nothing to show for it. Yep, yep. Uh, to make it worthwhile. So, okay. Uh, yeah, she's functional without that. I yeah. just didn't know if there's anything along the lines yeah. of what you were John, doing. John Hall, by the way, one of the all-time surgeons of all time, uh, was was my professor, and he he was the surgeon's surgeon surgeon. Uh, had was born with the radiosynostosis. He has zero ability to pronate supinate because that that you can actually you can substitute that motion in your shoulder pretty well. And as long as you have if, as long as you have some shoulder control, mm -hmm. almost all the pronation supination you need is there. As long as you're not hyperpronating.